Title 42, um, is the United States ready for the surge of people that's going to come across the border starting later this week? But it remains to be seen. It's going to be chaotic for a while. Chaotic for a while. It's been so calm, but now it's going to be chaotic. Joining me now, Mark Krikori, an executive director for the Center for Immigration Studies. Mark, the border has been so so calm and peaceful and secure. It's about to get chaotic, though. Yeah, uh, I thought this was just like a seasonal thing. It happens every year. It's no big deal. Uh, you know, this is unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable what's going on. And people aren't even waiting for Title 42 to end. Uh, Babylon B had a joke that Mayorkas was going down to the border to fire the starting pistol, you know, for uh, all the illegal immigrants, but they're jumping the gun <laughs> and uh, they're just pouring over now and overwhelming the border patrol. And the border patrol's going to be is stuck because of the Biden policies because they end up just letting them go. I mean, some of them they'll get sent back, but a lot of them are just going to be released onto the street. Okay, Mark, let's let's focus on this for a moment. Where are these people coming from? I know for a fact we have over 80,000 people coming from Venezuela. Who's coming here? They're coming from every place. Venezuela, Haiti are two big places. Uh, but our one of our guys is down there um, uh, in Matamoros, which is opposite Brownsville, Texas. The hotel he's staying in there is loaded with people from Kyrgyzstan, which is one of those Central Asian former Soviet republics, a whole hotel full of them. So they're coming from every place. I was on the border a few weeks ago over in Arizona. Uh, we ran into a family from Angola, and I talked to a group of about half a dozen people from Georgia, from the Republic of Georgia and the Caucasus. So word has gotten out. This isn't just nearby people. It certainly no longer has anything to do with just Mexican farm workers. This is now a worldwide phenomenon because Biden has invited basically every wannabe illegal immigrant in the world to head to the Mexican border, and the odds are pretty good that they'll end up being let go if they get across. Mark, I hate to ask a, a freaking nerd detail question, but this stuff fascinates me, and you're the expert on this stuff. Okay, Georgia, Kurdistan, or whatever place that was you just mentioned. How do they get... How do they get from there to here? What is the process? Are these people hiding out in cargo ships? Are they booking a flight on Delta? How does one even do that? They're flying here. The uh, Georgians was an interesting case. After the Border Patrol took the busload of people away, I went on the other side of the fence, still in the U.S., but it's the side facing the river, walked around. I found a torn up e-ticket, printout e-ticket, uh, from uh, one of the Georgians from Paris to Cancun. So they had to get themselves to Paris and they paid for a round trip ticket to, to con the Mexican visa officer into thinking they were just coming to Cancun for vacation. And then they take a bus up to the border and they just walked across and Border Patrol is there to pick them up very obligingly. Okay. All right, I've heard that we're sending troops down to the border. Is that gonna do something to secure the border, Mark? Uh, no. In fact, if anything, it's going to make it worse. Troops can't arrest people. It's, a, it's in the United States. They're not going to be shooting people. Under, even under earlier administrations, when they sent National Guard or troops, they were basically assisting the Border Patrol with you know, transportation, whatever it is. They were doing support stuff so more agents could be on the line. The thing is, in earlier administrations, those troops were helping the Border Patrol do their job, which was keep out illegals. Under this administration, they're going to be tasked with helping the Border Patrol do the job that Biden has given to them, which is to be Walmart greeters. In other words, they're going to be helping Biden's people process illegals into the United States even faster than they would otherwise. So I got to say, it's actually would be better if those troops weren't sent to the border, because all they're going to do is speed up this disaster that Biden has created. So it seems like the Biden administration, on top of being communists who want to flood this country with illegals to bring America to its knees, it sounds like what they're most interested in is just getting these people into America as quickly as possible so there aren't any ugly looking photographs of them down by the border. Do I have that about right? Yeah, that's the main thing is not to stop the flow, but to accommodate it and make it smoother and less chaotic so that nobody has things to take pictures of. That's what it amounts to, including 
letting people in through ports of entry, the regular legal crossing points, um, they have there's this app called CBP One where you can schedule your illegal entry into the United States at a port of entry. And so you're technically legal, but the administration is breaking the law by letting you in and then letting you go. And they're not going to look for you if you don't show up to whatever hearing you may or may not have years in the future. In New York City, people are getting court dates, illegal immigrants coming across the border, getting court dates in 2033, 10 years from now. Uh, it's just, it's, it's absurd. Yeah, okay. Mark, explain to the person who's not on the border and these people aren't moving in next door, explain why it is such a big deal that we have a bunch of people not loyal to this nation flooding into this nation. Well, first of all, Biden has doubled immigration through this program. He is letting in, he has let in over two years more people illegally and I mean, I mean people he had in custody and then led into the country more people than total legal immigration. So nobody's voted on doubling immigration. He's just doing it illegally on his own. But as far as costs go, what do you think the people in New York think of the hundreds of millions that New York taxpayers are having to spend? In fact, it's so bad, the mayor said he was going to have to cut back services for New Yorkers in order to pay for all the illegals that are going there. Uh, there's school districts, especially you see this a lot in Texas. We wrote about uh, one of them at CIS.org, uh, which is being you know huge numbers of illegal immigrants coming in, totally changing the nature of the school system and actually the community altogether. Um, this may not, this is one of those things that you may not care about illegal immigration, but illegal immigration cares about you. Mark, okay, so now that Democrat cities are feeling the brunt of it, I, I, look, I'm looking for any light I can find here. Is there any chance that there's some Democrat pressure put on Joe Biden to stop this? Because Joe Biden's president for another year and a half, a little more than a year and a half, at the very least, there's no stopping it while he's president unless he decides to stop it. Is any chance of something good happening? Not much. A little bit, maybe, but not much. The mayors of uh, Chicago and New York and others did complain about this behind the scenes. I mean, they're complaining in front of the cameras, but they've called the White House and said, you gotta stop this. The problem is this administration is stocked with people who don't believe the border of the United States is legitimate. They don't think the American people have the right to say no to anybody so that, you know, what are they gonna do? They'll do something, they'll go through some motions for political, you know, the political cover, PR reasons, but their heart isn't in it. And you need to you need to have sustained vigilance to stop this. I don't see this administration being able to do it. The only good sign, okay, I'll give you a little silver lining, is that things have to get really bad before things change. And we need a lot of change in our immigration system. And maybe this disaster will create the political sentiment among not just people on the right, but in the middle too, to fundamentally change our immigration system. I have great news. If you enjoyed that, I have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. Whatever I do, it'll be right there on YouTube. So go subscribe today.